Okay, so in this video we're going to do the uh, final element of the previous uh, lecture where we solve this problem. Basically it was a wind box with one of the panel, this one at the top, uh, removed. Okay, so the geometry is about everything in millimeters. This is 1,400 and 200. Okay. Let me just create the points first, so uh, geometry, points, so we do it this way, let's say we start by the bottom, minus 100, so we have one at 0, 500, and 1000. Then we're going to have one at 100. This would be 500. And this would be 0. So the width would be on the Z, would be 400. So let's say here, let me just do... Uh, all right, since we're doing symmetric, let's do first minus 200. And let's start by the bottom. We have zero, five hundred, one thousand. Now a plus one hundred. Five hundred and zero. Okay, now we go here to two hundred and be zero five hundred one thousand. And let's say that would be the last one. I'm hoping 500 and 0. All right, so let's see. Control A. So that looks about right. So we need. So let's say. Ah, let's do panels. So geometry surface corners method on point and we can do uh, okay so we might look but now I've done points that were not needed all the one in the middle now do this one this one this one this one we do the back. Now we do this one. So this one has panels everywhere. Top and bottom. Okay. Now That one, that one, that one, that one. So the bottom one, that one, that one, that one. Okay. All right, and the last one should be right over here. Okay, so that's the way I picture this problem over here, the geometry. Okay, so now we go, you can either go to the top menu or over here, but if you click on menu, let's say material, right click new, let's say you can put aluminum 2024, which I think is 75, Gigapascals, Poisson ratio 0 0.3, that's all we need. Okay. Cancel, so the material should be 
double click so as it's highlighted blue means it's active now property we need to define the new property so the material is here we're first going to define the shear panel and from the previous video Johnny that's what I do here so that I remove any stiffness along the edges you can put in all four but Johnny these two here I put one for simplicity okay and this should create our first property over here shear now we're going to create the road property also aluminum area one to facilitate every calculation and okay all right so now so let's do model no mesh mesh control size on surfaces okay select all so we can do what every 100 or 50 that would be too many let's do 100 and then if we need to refine we can refine just give us two four that might work okay so I'm gonna do mesh geometry surfaces so select all okay I'm gonna do the shear property that's it now we're gonna do uh, mesh geometry curves I think we can do select all okay I'm going to do the road property and okay then we go to tools check coincident nodes select all okay if you want you can click on preview done okay okay if you want here let's see color uh, let's see we put that one the reason why I choose that color is because that's the color actually of the aluminum 2024 when it's treated for uh, when it's uh, high pressure treated so then you can go to custom tools element update uh, color elements to match property okay and I don't know what color is this one but let's say you should this one okay I just choose weird colors but okay all right so now let's first apply the boundary condition so we could apply that boundary condition to all the surface or just to the lines uh, and then really we don't need this panel then uh, this panel should have zero any load because it's at the wall so let's see we can apply the model constraint let's see we do it on the surface so this will be clamp on that edge that one here okay and fix all right now we need to apply the loads over here so let me do something there's different ways you, I think you could apply here the load in the middle node but uh, I don't know if that's going to deform this one so my affect the loading so the way I will do it doesn't mean it's a correct one I will try to create what they call a spider web over here so it would be to connect this edge this edge this edge and the other edge to our center node so let's do that so i guess custom tools or user tools no custom tools machine spider nodes spider curves so spider curves i select this curve this curve this curve and this curve 
and it should create a node over there. Okay, now the problem is to make sure that we don't select the one. Alright, so let's see what's the name of the node created. Okay, we might have a problem selecting that node. Let me see something list uh, or F6 that might work. Uh, node ID apply. Click the control and move it, and here we should have two. Oops. So, okay, control A. Trying to find the numbers over here. Okay, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to differentiate what would be the two numbers here. Okay, so I'm going to have to do it another way here. Control A. Let's see if I deactivate these properties here. That should leave just one node. And that's the node sixteen looks like. Okay. Alright. So let's do this. I don't think it should be anyone. The tools check. Go and see the node. Select all. Okay. Preview. Okay, nothing should be coincident. Okay, so now we can apply the load at this node over here. So model load. We're gonna put on the node nodal. So let's say this will be shear force vy. So I'm going to apply it here, should be, oops, so we had 16 over here, so cancel, let me deactivate this one. Model load nodal, is that 14 or 16? Oh, I may have combined that one, maybe, okay. Okay, let's see what happened, that's all we can do. So I think that load was 2,000. Let's go back and check. VY is 2,000. Newtons and OK. Cancel, Control A. Reactivate the elements. So I need file, save as. Let me create a temp folder here. And if I need to copy it somewhere, I can copy it somewhere later on. So let's say it will be model FY only. Save. Can come here to the little gear. Create new. It's going to be static. You can say OK right away. Analyze. OK, so finish. It looks like there's no errors. Let's go to F6 to limit out all those node numbers or no labels. Apply. OK. Maybe now let's keep it just in case. Let's keep the geometry F5. Let's first do criteria deform. And here we're going to look at the shear. 
So shear force average, shear panel average stress. Since we put one, that should be the same thing. And okay. So basically you see over here, you have zero over here, five, 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 five. How about very small over here, zero, zero, zero. Okay, which is I think what we found when we did the classic solution. We just study just for y, and we found five on this panel, and five on the other panels. And basically, what happened is that uh, the theory basically give us what is that if the load is applied in that direction, only the panels in that direction of the force, which means these side panels over here, this one, this one this one and this one will resist the force. If instead of Vy, let's say we had a Vz in this case, which panel would be resisting that shear would be this panel here and this panel here. Okay? All right, so that's good. That's actually better than my previous model. So perfect over here. So now, Let's see what can we do. So let's save this one. And now let's say file, save as, model, torque only. Save, so all I have to do, let's say is to delete the results over here. All right, we need to delete the force. So let's see, loads, delete, okay. I like to do this, you don't have to, but now model, load, nodal. So let's say now torsion. Here, it would be this node over here. And it's a moment torque about which axis. So if it's about the X, no? Around this. Which is 1000 Newton meters, so which is 1000 times exponential three because it's 1000 times 1000, okay? If you want, let's put another three zeros because we move meters to millimeters. And okay, cancel. So that would be our new model. File, save as model T only, save. Yes, we close all this figure here. So we do the analysis again, we already created. Uh, let's see, hopefully it takes the load. Okay. So this will be our model over here. Ah, let's do one thing first. I am open. Sorry for that, let's go to this one here. And we also, remember we calculated the loads on the flanges. So let's maybe create a group, new, let's say top flange over here. So we're gonna take, so it's this one over here, it's active and group. element on curve, I think I'm, okay, see if I can do something before I do that. Let me eliminate this one. So now I'm gonna take only this one, okay. So on that curve, on that curve, that would be the top. Okay, 
hopefully that would work now group new bottom flange okay and let's say group elements on curve let me select this one and this one okay let me now all right so we're gonna do now f6 no sorry f5 and we're gonna look at the road actual force okay beam diagram okay so here gives you or oh, this one a bit confusing but if you come to the groups right click short tip group this will be the distribution for the for this one over here which basically is minus this but uh, 4720 but because of the mesh size is not very fine i think we have from 5000 to zero you see from 5000 to zero 2500 and the bottom flange is the opposite so this one is in compression the top one that's why it's going negative over here and this one should be positive here because it is in tension okay and that's because when you apply this load over here this is move up so if this moves up means this part here is going to bend this way so it's going to be in compression and this side the lower part is going to be in tension so let me save this and let us go to the torsion only okay so for the torsion uh, we have the result 12.5 12.5 and so let's see what we had torque only so 12.5 this is the walls okay so this should be this panel here and this panel here obviously this one is zero okay this one here should also be zero because it's not carrying anything it's just the whole box and this one so this gives us about 10.25 this should be the same as this one and this one should be the same as this one okay but one it will be in that direction see with opposite signs okay so Johnny for torsion the results are not that the same and I'm gonna show I mean I know exactly the same so 12.5 6.25 first equation okay so he had 3.125 and 9.375 so not this one corresponds to the this one here so you see it's not exactly the same and this one is not exactly the same either all right reason of this i think is because here we assume that everything is uh, ideal and let's do f6 sorry f5 contour okay f5 let's see what i'm showing here okay and let's look at the deform over here let me remove the geometry i mean this is well exaggerated because really the deformation is almost zero but basically what happens here is that you see that the deformation of this element here is a lot larger than any one of the other ones even though even though it's very small so and that's because when we do the assumption generally we assume you see the this is bending that the angle of twist of this section here will be the same as this section here even though the panel is not there so that creates and since that is not the truth is something called the shear lag which is basically this effect that you see this element deformation is a lot larger than any one of the other ones and that's what introduces the small difference so the difference on the shear panel flows for this side and this side okay 
So this has 0, 0, so let's go to F5, cut 3 again. All right, and you should see it over there. Maybe let me let me show you something in my work. So F6, no, F5, deform. Let's look at the total translation of something here. F5, contour, okay. Okay, I think that would be easier to see. You see that the deformation here, there is some change in colors here, the red, and that's what creates the extra deformation of this one. All right? But the assumption will say that the deformation here and here is the same, but you know that because of the angle of twist, it's not really what is happening. So anyway, it gives you a good idea. of the values anyway. So the 12.5 is good, good. This one should be what? 9.375, we get about 10.22. This one we get 2.26 over there and it should be about 3.125. So that means that for the shear, we had exactly the same value for the torque is a little bit different because the load applied here on the flanges on the transition from here to here, we assume is constant, but because the angle of twist of this box is not gonna be the same as this one, that creates the effect of the shear lag. All right, so save. And now if you want, what we can do is just file, save as, model, by and T so combine save so let's see if I keep this model all I gotta do is all results delete okay and now model Noro here is that the good one? Let me do here cancel for a second. Let me limit out this one. Moro load noro just to make sure I take the same one. So it was the same one 14 and I add the load here of 2000 on the y direction. So you have the torque and the load, reapply the elements, we run the case, there we go, F5, okay, and this value should be pretty accurate, these ones and these ones, but we know that once we start moving here, uh, it's not going to be that accurate because of the torque, but let's see compare this one and this one So what do we had combining both of them? Let's look at panel 1 panel 2 7.5 7.5 and panel 2 17.5 17.5 and obviously the other one panel 4 Which is what I think is panel 4 is this one uh, let's see which one was panel 4. No, panel 4 is on that side. So we get... Oh, let's look panel 3, which is on that side. 1.875. We get this. 7.2. We get 8.125. Okay? And here this one should be 0. Okay, so that's what we use to compare the uh, hand calculation with the final element. And I will terminate the video over here.